Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind-the-scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Al Gore, it's May. Here we are. You know what's crazy about May? No. It's the fifth month, which is close to the sixth month, which is halfway, but doesn't feel like halfway whatsoever. What does it feel like to you? First, third? Easily. Yeah. Because a couple weeks ago, uh, Bezos said on 5 9 2019, he's going to announce something. That was what, yesterday? Two yep. days ago? Yesterday. And, and when I saw that two weeks ago, I was like, oh, that's in the middle of the year. Like, that's, I got two months to wait for this. Announcement. Yeah, then Bezos dropped his uh, his lunar Bezos one. bomb is what they call it. Yeah, it looks it looks. No one calls it that. I don't. Eerily, really, uh, like nineteen fifties kind of sci fi. Why? Doesn't it look like that to you? It looks retro. It doesn't look like uh, sleek. It doesn't look like something Elon would do. Which makes me think like Bezos. That's why you're gonna win this. That's why you're gonna win this. You're no, you don't give a crap. You just utility. Get it done. Well, no, what's interesting too is like that's that's a good dichotomy that you brought up, um, because it, it looks like an updated version of the lunar lander. That's what it looks like—a spider with a ball in, in the center of it. Um, but Musk, Musk has a design sensibility, and Bezos, this is for robots. So if people were going, I bet you it wouldn't look like that, even if Bezos did it. Yeah. So that's why I think it's just robots. It just has to be pure weight, pure, pure money, all that other stuff. We're getting really off topic here. Well, hey, <laughs> why not? I haven't been in the, inside the firm for a whole week. Yeah, and that's what we do inside the firm. We yeah. go off topic. Yeah. Uh, but on topic is Bim Smith. Know where they got the name? Where? It's like blacksmithing, but for Bim Smithing, <sighs> forging, they, forging the future, forging content for the future. Well, you know they have Bim Smith Forge, correct? It was like a setup year. It's exactly. softball, right? Exactly. If you don't know what that is, you need to go check them out because they have a couple parts to what they do. They have content, uh, Revit content, CAD content, spec content, uh, wall assemblies, all that other stuff. You can log in. How much does it cost? It costs, what does it cost, Lance? Free 99. Ah, free 99. Free 99. Yep. F-R-E-E dot 99. You can store basically... The walls that you create, you can store the content that you have. It's, it's awesome. Go check it out. Check it out. Yeah. I have another update. Yes. So do you remember when you were gone, I did an interview with Enix Sears and Mark LePage? Yeah, apparently it was really good. Still haven't listened to it. It's on my list to do. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm <laughs> terrible. <laughs> That's what I am. Fair, fair enough. Um, so I am in both of those courses, mm-hmm. and I'm happy to report that I actually like both of them. Good. Uh, the so Enix Sears, I've updated our contract. I think I've added some really cool stuff. I still need to that. look at that. It, it's in our regular one now. I, I moved know. it to to I our know. regular one. So it's 2019. You'll see it's the most I recent it, one. Yep. Um, and then Mark LePage. So I have my own metrics about how I measure my firm, um, and it's making me look at them differently and simplify them. And make it easier, you know, like now I can understand it more, which means less stress, which means I can operate better. So um, I'm only in like the first couple of weeks of each one of them, uh, but they're going great. So I know I endorse them before just based off of looking on the outside. Yeah, and to be clear, everybody, we are not paid by Enoch Sears or Mark LePage. We are just no. simply endorsing their courses. Take a look, have a look, check yep. it out, yep. do it. Yep. If you If you need profit... You can't operate. <laughs> you can't operate Do a firm. You need profit? Question mark. You, you, you cannot operate a business without profit. I'm sorry. Got to yeah. do it. Got to do it. Got to get it done. Yeah. And it, so, anyways, uh, I, I like them. Man, have you seen the guys are pulling up? You haven't been inside the firm, no, so you have been outside of the firm. <laughs> yeah. So there's a there's a some sort of marketing event in Denver, and I saw it on the TV first, but somehow they pulled it up on on YouTube, and it's like. Do you want to make cash, 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 Saturday, Saturday, Saturday? But uh, you want to know how to up your business and rev? Like it was, I, I thought it was a parody. Like I thought they were joking, like yeah, mocking. That makes me stressed out. Uh, just what all that made me very stressed yeah. out just now. Yeah. Um, so these 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 are profit courses based on money, but it's not it's not that nonsense. It's legitimate things where 
Um, basically, they present ideas that they vetted, and then you can adapt them. And that's what I've been doing is you adapt them to the way your firm operated operates. It's not going to be exactly how they're doing it. So adapt it to what you're doing. So check those out. Um, Enix Sears is architectresources.org.com uh, uh, forward slash profit dash levers. It will be on inside the firm podcast.com. I'll put the, both of these notes and then Mark LePage's profit course is entre E N T R E architect.com forward slash profit course. No dash there. No dash there. Yeah. Can't wait to see, uh, both of those gents uh, at the AIA convention uh, in, a, in, a, in June, coming up quick. Yeah, coming up quick. I need to, one of my tasks this weekend is to get uh, a list together. People are contacting us because we're media and they want to be interviewed. So Vectorworks is one of them. Um, somebody else, I need to get back to them. Maybe Bim Smith? Hopefully Bim Smith. <laughs> Yeah, but we will have a booth. Uh, we will be we will, we will have a booth there. We'll be hanging out. So if you know that I will be there, I'm I'm friendly. Al won't be there because he's having a baby. Unfriendly. I'm also unfriendly. He's also unfriendly. Um, and so if it, just uh, holler at me, come oh. over, check it out, and uh, I'll talk to you. That'd be great. Love to ha- love to have you on for a quick snippet or something. I want to have something so like I can pull people off the floor. And just have them like give them like a one two three questions, you know, something like that. Oh yeah, and just do some quick segments. Um, yeah. and cut them together later for a special podcast. Interesting. Like ask them like, what do you think about it? What is your takeaway? Um, what's the coolest thing you could say right now? That would be super awesome. Exactly. Just put them something on the spot. like that. Something like that. <laughs> awesome. Yep, exactly. Hey, you want to know what time I think it is? I think it's crazy time. Is what you're doing? Okay. I, I was just ragging on this in the Entree Architect community. So go hilarious. for it. Yeah. Okay. I think it's time to join the AIA. I'll give you four reasons. Why? We have three projects that could win awards that are going to be complete this year. Two that could win awards that will be complete. What is M2? Mark two. The oh. project that you, the only project you've been <laughs> focused on. Literally outside the firm. <laughs> Piece of sculpture. Yep. So uh, El Dorado Climbing Walls, I think you're going to win an award. Top I think shelf. Gonna, I think you're going to win an award too. But what? Yeah. But no, but here's the other thing. Here's the caveat. This is my put I you over I need a benefit there. besides an award because I can win an award at Architizer again all day. I'm serious. No. Okay. Here's the other one. Uh, your, yours truly. Yours truly, Al Gore. Uh, Al Gore is keynote speaking at an event that we'll unveil in, in, in a couple weeks um, at an AIA event. And it's going to be a keynote speech, but it's going to have credits to it. So to get credits, you don't have to be an AIA member. Right. But the price is to, to, to deliver credits, to like be, hey... It, so if I'm the speaker giving the presentation and you're getting the credits, like I have to be a certified person that has to follow these semi rules, has to register so that AIA knows that, hey, you actually took a class, you know, from me, right? Yeah. So if you're not part of the AIA, it's a bucket load of money. If you are, it's not a bucket load of money. So if you become part of the AIA, yes, then people who listen to you when you speak pay less money no no say it again that's what i'm totally confused here. okay so you know the people that come in and do those courses but let's say it's you right yes okay so they don't just they don't just say hey i'm joe bob you get a credit they have to be registered it has to be reviewed you have so to are, follow guidelines so because you're a keynote thus you have to pay a fee got it my fee goes down if you're an ai what member. percentage uh 1200 to like 250 that seems like extortion <laughs> <laughs> that's why i whispered it <laughs> <laughs> no one can hear with the microphone <laughs> all right i mean so there's four reasons oh uh, yeah there's your reasons i'm gonna have to think about that i think you should join how about you join i'm not gonna do it i don't see the benefit i'm somebody's gonna have to talk me into this how about this how about this here's the challenge when i go to the aia conference yes I'm going to challenge. I bet they're going to be. I bet somebody's going to be there. And they're going to be like, "You should sign up." No, no. You can should, you? Can you? And please wanna, make a banner and say, "I don't want to join the AIA." Change, change my, my mind. mind. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Change my mind. Change my mind. Yeah. Internationally award-winning architect Lance Psycho. Change Dude, my mind. Do it. I'll think about it. Yeah. I know it seems someone will have like one good point. You'll be like, oh yeah, maybe. You know what? Well, that's the challenge. You know what the first thing they're going to say is? Yes, that's a challenge, Jackie. Yeah. But here's my prediction. The first thing you're going to say is, you have access to all the contracts. I don't want your contracts. They're scary to clients. I don't want They them. are scary to clients. 
We'll see, Al. I still don't think we need to do it. I look, I the, out of all four of the reasons you gave me, only one of them makes sense to me, and that's the keynote thing. I get that. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I'm trying to think about okay, the contracts, right? That's a different. So, so we, so let me get this right. Get this straight. You are being flown down to go do a given a, give a keynote speech. Yes. Meaning they're paying for your room and lodging and flight there, right? Yes. Okay. Then they want you to pay an additional fee on top of it to give the speech? I think they assume that normally people of that caliber already kind of have this situated. Ah. Uh, yeah. Either way, though, let's say you were, were part of the AA, you would still be paying. Yes. Seems like you're getting ripped off. No, no, no. <laughs> Seems like just a free trip. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah. um, All right, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some. I'll give you some points after the show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. We aren't naming names. I'm just. I'm just yeah. saying. Anyway, yeah. I have a good shout out. I want to give a shout out to Nick Nicholas James Renard. Uh, last Friday, uh, his uh, he was given the AIA Jackson. Mellon C. Greeley Award for Craftsmanship and Architecture. Wait, wait, time out, time out. Did he just win an AIA award? And what then an got amazing a sh- honor! A shout out because of it. What an amazing honor! What an is. amazing honor! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh, so, I, so what crazy coincidence! I say congratulations <laughs> to Nick Renard on that award. Huh. If he wasn't in the AIA, could he have won that? I don't know. He'd have to maybe submit to Architizer. Yeah, you know. Something like that. Anyways, that's a side note. I mean, congratulations <laughs> to Nick. Uh, he does some awesome stuff, and he's being recognized for it, so good. Yeah, too cool, Nick. Some of these houses that Nick is putting out with Dig Architecture are just phenomenal. Yeah. Everything everything from the, you know, like, one of the one of the things I think people take for granted is when they look at these modern houses and everything lines up on the outside. Literally, just windows and stuff. Because I, I, that's the way I look at it. I go... Man, that's that took a lot of thought to make the form, to make the inside speak to the outside, and everything looks complete. There's don't take it for granted. And I mean, I think a lot of our listeners already know this. I saw a rendering from a local architecture firm where they had this really cool concrete wall that comes out, but you know, borders their sidewalk, and then they stuck this metal uh, mailbox in it. And my brain instantly went to like, oh, did Dida? <laughs> To detail that mailbox and what kind of metal it is and the, the, specify the finishes and do the thickness and all the dimensions is going to be like four times more than just buying a stupid mailbox. <laughs> but it's not a stupid mailbox. It's a cool looking mailbox. But yeah. So yeah. Rock and roll. Yep. Uh, all right. What do we got next here? We've got. When have... to tell a client to tear down their house. So I do more remodels than you, I feel like. Yes. Okay. And I'm happy so, with that. That's cool. Yeah, we, we do, uh, my, my side of the firm does a ton of remodels. We do pop tops, all of that kind of stuff. And I have been having, uh, this is just several meetings in a row where I go, to, I go and I listen uh, diligently. I take a bunch of notes with the client. And they've described so many things that are wrong with their property. Mm-hmm. And I mean fundamental things. Like this one house I went to, I think it was it was cited the wrong way such that, wow, you should just flip this 180 degrees. Oh. Literally, the house needs to be flipped. I hate one, when that happens. Yeah, and it was on a 10-acre piece of property. Oh. I know, right? There's no... Come on, exactly. That's, that's whole, exactly what I, kind of the response I was looking for. Look, if, if it's a planned... If it's a PUD and everybody has an eighth of an acre, all right. Your house goes where your house your goes. Your house goes... What are you going to do? Nothing. If you have even a half acre... Man, I feel like a quarter is still probably... Eh. No, a quarter, it's your house is where your house is. There's a half no acre in. or more? Oh, why, why Why didn't you make that face south? It's Colorado. It's really sunny. We can we have, we, we can, we have such a high diurnal effect here with a lot of sunshine. 300 days of sunshine. You can passively heat your house. You passively well, cool your house. Like, what are you doing with your life? With a place that has views. <sighs> That's the other thing. Yeah, exactly. Mountains, right? I mean... They at least got that right. They, but the way you entered the house, it was just horrible. So I get out of that meeting and I'm like, so I, and I posted in the Entree Architect community, uh, y'all, Facebook, y'all ever, y'all ever urge, y'all ever have the urge to tell prospective clients to just tear their house down as opposed to remodeling it? What would they say? Oh, it was hilarious. Uh, like 50 reactions. People were laughing, loving it, and all over. And people were people people were getting it all out of their system, right? And I feel like it's a good place for us to do that. Um, 
But there were some really good points that I wanted to bring up, and I wanted to see what you thought. My my rule of thumb, and a couple people confirmed it, was if you're affecting more than 30% of the house, it's time to get rid of it. Meaning, if you're destroying more than 30% of the house... Wait, who said that? It's time to get rid of it. Uh, well, so that's that. That's my rule of thumb. Okay, I was like, wait, are you quoting me from... Nope, the, nope. Yeah. And then, no, no, Alex wasn't even in this thread. And so somebody else says, uh, clients should consider the two-thirds rule... If the cost of the renovation exceeds ter- two thirds cost of the new construction, go new, right? So another kind of two thirds to one thirds thirds type of thing. Yep. The the big I think, and then some other people said uh, this is a really good point to um, uh, urge. I have actually told a client he should tear down the building he purchased and start over. The structural engineer, the client. Uh, hired also told him that the client didn't, and I'm sure he spent more money than if he had started new. But he is a, but he's very pleased with the building. If he is happy, then I am happy. I am never afraid to give a client my opinion, and explain why. But I will do what they ask as long as it is code compliant and legal. And that's been our approach. Uh, there was this, there was this, you know. And then, then he went on to say, I went on to tell this gentleman like he's my new spirit animal because he is. Yeah. That like that I, I re- that kind of honesty without being uh, arrogant is good. And you know, he kind of brings that up again. He goes, I can't figure out why it seems to be like so many architects are afraid of their clients. You know why it is? Why? I think it's not that we're afraid of our clients. It's that we're afraid of losing the job. Right? Yes. It is such a competitive market. It is so hard to get work. Um, like consistently, and you know, it's so competitive. People just under, undercut each other. Yeah, uh, happens to us all the time in, in the town we operate in. He goes, be honest and not arrogant. I just try to share the experience I have. I give my suggestions and explain why, but it is always the client's final decision. I feel very fortunate to be able to do what I love. Be confident and secure in what you do and believe in. We are here to help people, not force our opinions on them. Sometimes clients and architects just don't match up, but that is fine. Just move on to the next client. You might help. Just my two cents. I think his two cents were great. They're yeah. perfect. You got to be, don't be afraid of saying, yeah, this isn't going to work. We're good. Like, you don't, you don't like my fee. You don't like my ideas. You don't like my suggestions about tearing it down because it was your grandma's house or something. And at the end of the day, I think it's okay to just walk away from the whole thing. I think it's absolutely okay to walk away. I also think it's absolutely okay to say, Hey, this isn't how I would do it. And I'm not talking about your situation. I'm talking more broadly. Just, just generally. Yeah. This isn't how I wouldn't do it. But I am also not you. <laughs> <laughs> and you might want to do something with your property that you own that you like and you're going to pay me for. And as long, you know, as long as we're not breaking things, doing terrible things, you know, that's okay too. And I think because it, go ahead. He, then you're forcing someone to always find someone maybe in their smaller city that thinks exactly how they think. Like, what? That's I don't know. That's hard. You're limiting people's uh, access to what they want to do. Doesn't seem like a win. No. Doesn't seem like a win. But I, I you know, to go back to his first point here about um, use, you know, use your, share your experience. So hopefully by the, t- if you're listening to this, you can point to some experience that you've had with a different client where they didn't tear down the house and the contractor literally told you after the project they should have just tore it down yep. and the client also agreed yes we should have just tore it down it yeah. ended up costing us more money to save the whole thing when in the end we wanted something drastically different from what was there going to be there in the beginning let's say it's an old bungalow like we've done this before in denver yep. you worked on that project and we turned it into a mid-century modern yeah. piece right just th- that's and the other thing is i think be comfortable with Expressing your opinion. So there's one. There's there was an example recently. Uh, it was like last year. We're still working on this project. The client wanted to raise their house two feet. I'm not joking. Like they what they wanted to do was they basically want to pick it up off the foundation, raise it two feet, and 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 then and then remodel it. In in addition, gut the whole interior. Yeah. And I go. So we get that. You know, I'm just listening, taking notes. I get done with the meeting. Or get, or we're almost at the end of the meeting. And they go. So what do you think? And I go. This seems like a scrape to me. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like you're doing just as much work as it would take to tear down a house. And they go like, "Why well, aren't we saving money?" I go, "How much do you think it costs to tear down a house?" And and client and contractors tell me this all the time. In Denver, about twenty five to thirty five thousand, depending on a best abatement. Yep, that's not that big. Of, that's not that big of a deal in the scheme of things. Again, compared to okay, are you gonna are you gonna have to pay for that twenty five to thirty five thousand later on just to try to marry walls up and do all this other stuff? 
the conclusion of this client was, and I just got this phone call the other day from the designer we're working with. She goes, yeah, they decided not to raise it two feet. And I go, why? Uh, because the contractor who originally told them they could do it cost effectively came back and said it would cost you just as much money to tear it down <laughs> <laughs> and, and build a new house. So w- one thing I'm trying to improve on is I- I've used the argument like my experience are in the past and it's hit or miss with that. I'm trying not to use that and then trying to use just based on the actual situation. Smart. So then you could say, hey, <clears throat> you could do this. It would cost this amount, right? And it's going to be, you know, slog, blah, blah, blah. Or if you tear it down, let's say you're closer to that two-thirds numbers. Yes, it might cost you slightly more. Maybe not. But the value of a new house, a totally new house versus a renovated house, and then say, which one do you want to choose? And I'm trying to make it specific to them and not about not about the, not about the past. It, it's hard because I need to formulate new arguments like every time. you know, Because a lot of times I'm, I'm looking at floor plans or whatever, and I'm going to be like, well... This is dumb. This is not going to work. Okay, why? <laughs> yeah. And, and not like, oh, we've never done it that way. Or it's never been done that way. Why has it never been done that way? Oh, because the circulation doesn't work out. Because it, you know, all, all these other reasons. So I like that. Yeah. You just have to let us know if, but you don't, yeah. I don't know. You just, there's a fine, you know, some other people were saying like, there's a fine line. Yes. Yes. There is a fine line. There's a fine line on how you approach. You just you're just gonna have to make a judgment call at the end of the day, but know mm-hmm. that like there it doesn't always cost it is not always cost effective to save these things. I'm, I'm telling you, it's just like some of these, my God, some of these um, garages that we're doing in Denver. You go and dig around the foundation, and there is no foundation. Oh, every garage in Longmont also. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Same thing. It's usually just some rubble, and then they just yes, it it literally just rubble. And it, yeah, it's standing and it works, but like. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Like, now we're not going to do that. You know, now we're going to build it correctly. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm excited to listen to Nick. Nick Reed's AIA award-winning architect. (laughs) Tall, super tall man. Super tall man. Yep. Hello, best friends. I hope you all had a great week this week. A letter. May 4th, 1953. Dear Mr. Snower, your letter on April 26th arrived just as Mr. Brewer was leaving town, and he asked that I write you. He would be very interested to design a house for you, but whether or not it would be advisable from your point of view would depend upon the amount you have set for the house. Would it be possible for you to send us this information? Mr. Brewer's fee is 15% of the cost of the building and furnishings. This includes plans, details, and specifications of the special house he would design for you, suited to your particular needs and to the site you have selected. The other services Mr. Brewer will go into with you himself when he writes. However, this fee does not include the cost of blueprints, long-distance telephone calls, and traveling expenses. In the event that you selected furniture from suppliers in New York, full discount would be passed along to you. In the case, for example, of Nolan Associates, this would be 33 and a third percent. Of Herman Miller Furniture Company, 40 percent. Our fee would be based on the net cost of furniture. Mr. Brewer will return to the office later this week. As soon as we have the information about your budget, he will write you himself. In the meantime, he asked me to thank you for your interest in his work. Sincerely, the office of Marcel Brewer. Outstanding. Toodles! The only way I think we ever get back to this large percentage is design build develop agree 100 percent. that's where you get to and and yeah so i was uh discuss you know some there were some people um somebody posted about uh you know they were complaint like i think amazon was going to start selling uh houses sheds. did you see this sheds or houses yep houses literally plants and stuff like that and they look pretty generic and i was like 
No, a company is making a computer program that makes the plans for you, flexes it, and sp- spits out blueprints. That was on Entree There Architect. you go. Yes, that's what it was. That's what it was. And I jumped in and was like, let's just, guys, we, like, the technology is inevitable. It's going to happen. We, people, and people are going to pick it. People are going to decide, yes. this is what I want to do. But there's still going to be a large percentage of people on the planet Earth that want they want human interaction. They want somebody to build the house. They want they don't want to go to the computer. It's just like anything else where like if you call into your, your insurance company and you get the automated system like nope, I want to I want to freaking talk to a person hmm. and get down to the bottom of this. The the way I think like we've got to start getting back into you're the designer, you're the builder, you're the developer. Maybe you're not even maybe you're not the developer, but at least you're the builder at the end of the day. Like you like we have to start taking back control of how this how how this stuff works and embrace the technology instead of complaining on being worried about it because it's going to happen. I'm yeah. sorry, like we are just advancing so quickly. You know, 3D printing is going to happen. It's going to happen real quick. Next decade, I feel like we're we're going to get close. Yep. And I think there's an opportunity too because there's going to be you know that program that spits out floor plans. There might be some uh, robots or 3D printing that that help build it. And there's going to be this interface issue. There's going to be all these uh, p- people are going to throw out words like C plus plus. And all me and you things. are going to get to that stage where we're we'll like, oh, I don't want to deal with this. Can you young person figure that out? Because and that's why you got to hire ooh. talented people. Yep, got to yeah. hire. We got to hire young talented people who who can tie into your vision and vice versa. Yep. Let's just not make excuse for technology taking our jobs because excuse isn't going to get you anywhere and see how you can take advantage of it and where it's leading to. Because sometimes they, you know, it might squeeze out some, some of your job, but just like a factory, you know, auto plant, what are you going to do about it? The robot goes weld spot welds, come back every time there. There's no amount of, whining or crying that can make that spot weld or not spot weld and take your job. So you got to do something else. You got to do something else. You got to adapt, right? That's our biggest, that's one of our, the best things about humans, right? They can adapt. Yeah. So we got to adapt to this stuff. It is what it is. Yes. And no, those computers, it's very hard to adapt. They can spot weld, but if you move that car, (laughs) they're going to spot weld the wrong spot, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Anyways, uh, good stuff, Lance. Good stuff. You're good stuff, Al. What do we got next? We got the boys. So let's bring in the boys for ARE Jeopardy. All right. These two questions are interrelated. They're going to ask about the fire resistant rating of different materials. Um, And the reason why you guys should know this is because you can do your own assembly, right? By putting the pieces together and adding everything up, right? So number one. According to IBC table, this is where you find it, uh, 722.6.2, uh, what is the fire-resistant rating of a half-inch gypsum wallboard? A, 30 minutes. B, 25 minutes. C, 60 minutes. D, 15 minutes. I got a question for you after, after we tackled this whole thing. Yep. A, 30 minutes. B, 25 minutes. C, 60 minutes. D, 15 minutes. Do, 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 do. A, B, A, A, A. You are all wrong. <laughs> it is D, 15 minutes. Half inch. According to that same table, what is the fire resistance rating of 5 8 inch gypsum wallboard? A, 45 minutes. B, 25 minutes. Hmm. C, 60 minutes. D, 30 minutes. Do, do, do. You guys were probably thinking about type X before. You were probably thinking about type X gypsum, not regular. C is 60 minutes. 30 minutes. Do, do, do. Do, do. D, B, D, B, D. Wow. You guys went in order there. It is D. So everyone that got D, uh, Gresh, can you throw me that marker right there? Thank you. Here's All another right. one. No, I got it. You got it? Yep, you, you can talk. Okay. You're keeping tally? Oh, <laughs> wow, he had to go outside the firm. Now he's coming back inside the firm. Everybody listening terrestrially, which is everybody. All right, number three. What is the non-destructive test 
used to determine the strength of hardened concrete by measuring the rebound of a plunger after striking the concrete surface known as A. Strike test B. Plunger test C. Impact hammer test D. Non-destructive concrete test We got some answers? No repeats on this one? What? <laughs> They're just guessing. A, they A, are just B, guessing. B, and C. C is correct. Who? Ah. And hey, guys, so um, five eighths gets you a lot more. That's why that was 30 minutes, where one half inch is only 15 minutes, which is crazy. But type X is even different than those. So that's, that's the whole Look explanation at there. Look at you. Uh, all right, number four. What do we got so far for scores? Two points, one point, one point. Oh, sweet. We got a leader. We got a leader. Here we go. This, is, this should be a layup. What is, the, what is the resistance to the movement of a retaining wall provided by the earth in front of the wall and its footing known as? A, lateral pressure. B, lateral resistance. C, passive pressure. D, zero line pressure. Just common knowledge, right? Uh, all the questions again? Or the question plus the answers? Okay. Four. What is the resistance to the movement of a retaining wall provided by the earth in front of the wall and its footing known as? A, lateral pressure. B, lateral resistance. C, passive pressure. D, zero line pressure. Doo-doo. Doo-doo. We got uh, C, B, B, A, and A. The correct answer is C. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. How many C's do we have? We have one C. One C. We have a tie. Ugh. So we will have to come back with more questions. Stay tuned. And we're back. We never even left. Uh, whoever. So this is a one word answer. Okay. You got to write it. One word answer. Whoever writes it, whoever writes it and holds it up correctly the first. That's how we're going to do this. Ready? Here we go. Bonus question. A waterproof, what is a waterproof box-like, box-like structure in which construction work can be performed underwater? Also, a pile constructed by pouring concrete into a drilled shaft. You guys have drawn this. That's your hint. You have drawn this on foundation plans. Oh, footing. my God. Over and over again. Oh, yep. yep. It's not a footing. I don't have a footing. What I don't do have I a have? footing. What do I have? What do, how do hmm. I stay how A do I waterproof stay up? box-like a structure in which construction work can be performed underwater, also known as a pile constructed by pouring concrete into a drilled shaft. No footing. Zero footing. What do you use in, instead what do you of a got? footing? What do you got? If you're not doing a footing, what, how are you making this thing hold up? Uh, one guess is pure. That is no. incorrect. Boy, well, that was we got a water boy. Terrible. We got sh- sh- shoring. We got that. We got uh, somebody else who looks like they're maybe Come guessing. Some people are just not guessing at all. Yeah, Ross is correct. Kason. There we go. Kason. Still got a tiebreaker though, don't we? Yep. All right. What do we got? I'm gonna, I gotta pause it again. All right. This one's got to be easy. We're back. Uh, what is a reinforced concrete wall which is precast at the job site, usually in a flat position and later tilted up and set into place known as? Two words. Two words. What do we got? Uh, yeah, t- one answer is tilt up. That's incorrect because it's close. Tilt up. Uh, it's tilt up wall. I would give it to them. They both said. <laughs> no, okay. You're gonna they give said it the to same him? thing. Uh, Gresh was slightly faster. Gresh wins today. He gets to punish <laughs> Mark, uh, <laughs> because it's we're taco having ta- it's taco week. Taco week. That is rough on All our right. system. <laughs> so just to just <laughs> to wrap up, uh, visit Enex Sears Profit Levers at Architect uh, Architecture Resources uh, dot org forward slash Profit Levers. Mark LePage at um, Entre Architects E N T R E Architect dot com uh, forward slash Profit Course. So it'll be on our show notes. I'm sure I messed those up. You got that. Uh, you got that. Please write to us. People have been writing to us um, and telling us about you know what they liked on an episode or a podcast or anything like that. We're also happy to answer any questions you have uh, while we're here at Inside the Firm. So with that, we'll talk to you next week.